when you hit the bell, horse, the, the, the subscribe the button, the dishes of the of the <laughs> of the drums, the dishes, the dishes. You know the ride. Ding, 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 the ding, dishes. Ding. I don't the know! Symbols! Symbols! <laughs> Hi everybody! This is Jade and Federico from Frozen Ground and in this video we will be talking about the lyrics of our albums. No? Of our albums? Uh, yeah, ly lyrics? We will be talking about lyrics. Mi sono stata in agitazione tutta la mattina. <ride> Ho pulito il tavolino con lo spazzolino da denti, il tavolino fuori per. <ride> cioè, è logico che in una canzone volevo esprimere il concept che avevi in testa. Ah, eh, ma tu l'hai ripetuta sì. fino a mo. Ma non serve che mi ripeti. Before we go on, this video is going to be made by two parts. First one is me and Jade talking about our lyrics, our influences, the topics, and to reply to some of the most frequent questions we receive about our lyrics. Later on, I'm going to talk about how do we write lyrics, taking I am the tyrant as an example. If you remember, we already anticipated this in our video, how to write a song, the frozen crown way, link in the description. If you didn't watch that video before, just go watch watch it again no again just go watch it if you are liking this video don't forget to put a like to comment to subscribe to our channel to share it with your friends and of course don't forget to check out our official store frozencrown.bcartel.com The concept of the band reminds of something, you know, wintery, cold, because the band is called Frozen Crown. The uh, band is cold. Yes. Ah, <laughs> cold, no cold. Yes. Cold. Okay. The band is cold. I took inspiration many times on the fantasy world, like, you know, Game of Thrones, as I already told you. And I also took inspiration from the Nordic mythology, all the Tolkien world. I grown up with uh, Tolkien books before the movie went out, and I'm very proud of saying this. You didn't enjoy the movies? No, no, I enjoyed the movie, but I was fan of Tolkien before this fashion that followed the movie. You know, let us know in a comment if you want to see a video about Lord of the Rings and uh, Jay the uh, talking bad about movies or or good. I'm I'm talking good. I really enjoyed the movie, but you know, uh <laughs> Yeah, but you are one of those persons that are like, you know, like me, like, you know, if it's very different from the book, uh you're going to get angry. Oh, it could happen, yes, oh. uh, you know, uh, on The Hobbit it happened, because uh, on The Hobbit movie there are too many different things. On The Lord of the Rings, you know, something that has been cut, in my opinion, was a necessary evil, somehow. Okay, but don't, don't say more, just if you want to see <laughs> more about this Lord of the Rings stuff, let us know in a comment. Yes. All the stories that are built around the fantasy novels and books, specifically Lord of the Rings and a lot of characters, got me the inspiration because in the lyrics that I write you can always find a motivational message that comes from, you know, these heroes. Like Arya Stark, for example. Like Arya Stark, for example, or also like Eowyn from Rowan, from the Lord of the Rings. You know, I am a lot into these uh, shield maidens, these Amazons, these warrior girls, because I feel like one of them, and I... no? I feel like <laughs> one of them. <laughs> to be strong from the inside, to fight against the difficulties in life. And you know, all of these characters are, in my opinion, a great example. The way I want to live life and the positivity I want to transmit when I write lyrics. So you want to be a hero? I am. Ah, you are. Okay. <laughs> If I lived in the medieval times, of course, I would be, you know, that Viking girl going to war. <laughs> 
this is something very important because I wanted to talk about this motivational stuff. I mean, Frozen Crown lyrics are settled into a fantasy or medieval kind of, uh, you know, ancient kind of environment. Zords, uh, monsters, heroes and stuff. But of course, those are just, you know, a metaphor for us to talk about motivational stuff. You know? <laughs> like, for example, I'm thinking about Fail No More, written in a specific period in my life, right before creating Frozen Crown. I was just coming from a lot of failures in my life, you know? So uh, that, was, that song was also to remember myself. Uh, I didn't want to fail anymore. It was also a way to tell other people that were uh, about to give up or something to just you know have motivation to go on this may sound really silly and simple maybe this is not something very deep but um, I think that songs maybe work better if they are just straightforward and simple uh, to the point yeah, they just go to the point, you know. The Shield Maiden, it says, Hard me, I'll bleed, it won't break my will. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of this fighting as long um, as I breathe. You know, this metaphoric way to describe this battle, that could be a battle from the inside, can be a something that everyone can feel, that everyone can understand. Because I know, because I know, somewhere deep down in my heart, that if I write lyrics like these, people can easily relate to them. A lot of people could think, oh yes, she understands my feelings, even if the situation was different, we could have a similar way to relate to what can happen in life. So we talk about this motivational stuff. I think we could identify three major themes for our lyrics, which are this motivational stuff, you know, this uh, rocky uh, kind of thing. It's not a case that a lot of people send us videos uh, of them working out with, <laughs> with our music. Uh, and that's quite great, you know. Then we have some love songs. I mean, you wrote quite a, a few love songs in Frozen Crown. Yes. It's not my thing, you know, but she... <laughs> and then I think we can identify a major theme which is time yes in the dark forever towards the sun maybe also fail no more is about time also never ending to infinity to infinity also for example far beyond in the dark itself starts with the word time oh lost in time we we made a song called lost in time yes but that's about love not about time even if it's called lost in time yeah but, uh, but time is in the title okay so it's about time and love. You know, it's a somehow one of my obsessions. We are given a small amount of time because life flies. And for me, it's always very important to live it totally, to live it to... Uh, fully, you mean? Yes, to live it fully, to spend every day giving it a meaning and enjoying life. Because you know, tomorrow something could happen that uh cioè you puoi non puoi morire domani questo video. Yes, yes, tomorrow you could die. <laughs> it's important to make the best of the time we have. Self fulfillment, not wasting your life doing what you hate. Don't waste your life on something that it's energy consuming, something that don't deserves your attention. To spend time with people that consume you. Energetic vampires. <laughs> You know, build something positive for yourself and for the people you love around you. Spend your time with them. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah, ah. Every single artist is uh, actually dealing with the theme of time because, you know, time is running out uh, and that, that's also a Muse song, by the way. <laughs> we have so many things to say, to do, we always feel like our time is not enough. That's quite a sort of obsession. Maybe for you it's an obsession because you feel old. Yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I feel like I am 16 uh, inside, but you know, it's not like that anymore. <laughs> but you are 16 inside, no? Yes, but not outside. That's the problem. Ah, okay. Not outside anymore. <laughs> Do you guys think she looks 16 outside? Let us know in the comments. And you know, also my ID card says that I have to behave like uh, someone older than 16. You never actually told uh, your age to people. Yes, and I won't do it. 
One of the most common questions we receive is do you write lyrics or melody first? Of course, we already replied to this again in our video how to write a song the present crown way. Link in the description again. As we said, we start singing a melody with an acoustic guitar, you yes. know, like uh, oh, no, 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 just uh, mumbling, humming. Then when we are happy with the melody, we write some placeholder lyrics. Then, and I mean just before recording, we replace those placeholder lyrics with the final lyrics. We write the melody first because I have to try it and find the perfect tune to make the song work the best with my voice. So it's very important for me to have these milestones. Then based on the lyrics that come out later, you know, we can change some metrics, some notes, uh, but the main line has to be written before. We write the melody for the first verse, for the chorus, and we adapt the lyrics to that melody and to most importantly to that matrix. Then later maybe the second verse is usually um, has got that, that variations is a little bit uh, more free. But most importantly for me at least the choruses need to be set in stone. I mean the melody needs to exist before. When we wrote, for example, the chorus for In the Dark, yes. it was like na 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 Those vowels were already there uh, from the very beginning. I mean, uh, it wasn't like ni ni na ni na ni na ni. If a note has to be that high or that low, I have to choose which vowel I have to put there. Because, you know, of course, it makes no sense to put an I in a very, very high line because it sounds awful. A clear example of what I meant with this, you know that uh, at the beginning of the song they come out with a yeah, never with a e. And this brings me to another topic. We write fake lyrics. I mean placeholder lyrics. Yes. When we write a melody, then we write a first version of the lyrics, which are, of course, totally wrong, totally random, but already with the correct vowels we intend to keep in the song. Towards the sun, <laughs> the placeholder was uh, about taxes and government because it's one of my main topics. But, you know, he doesn't laugh about this. Uh, riguardo cosa non sto ridendo? Ah no, eh, riguardo al fatto che avessi, avessi scritto di tasse e governo. Non ti ha fatto ridere. No, I'm used to that, so that, that's not something strange. Mm. If you need a word that has two or three syllabes, it has to have also the right accent. Because we had a lot, a lot of fun during the writing of the chorus of the, ah. of the Lone Stranger. Because, you know, the line was na 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 And I wanted to say something like It all will be over Of course, over yes. has the accent on, on the O. Over has two syllabes, but the accent is on the first. And how was that sounding instead? Something like over, not over. There was like a, a word in the Neapolitan, Napoletano. Yes, yes, yes. To over, over. E over, I mean, is it true or not? E over o non e over? For a song to be more effective and to fix in your mind at the first listening... Uh, stick in your mind. Yes, to stick in your mind. <laughs> there are some tricks that can be useful, you know, like rhymes, you know, also rhythm given by the consonanti. For example, live all people are singing I am the tyrant, crown and fall. Everybody is singing that. That's very easy to remember. That's like a filastrocca. Yes. Uh, lullaby. A lullaby. That's like a lullaby. You know, it's something. And lullabies have got rhymes. They have got very simple and straightforward melodies. No, one of the most important things, in my opinion, before starting writing lyrics for a song is to have clearly in your mind the concept that you want to express. Because if you know what you want to say, it will be easier to build up the lyrics about the message you want to give. 
Oh. So about Towards the Sun, as I told you before, it has been hard to write uh, lyrics for this song aiming strictly on the metrics and expressing clearly a concept. <laughs> What I wanted to say in this song is that the passing of time changes us. For example, I say, as years go by, you lose piece after piece of yourself, crumbling away like stone to dust, and not even the mirror can tell if it's you anymore. Life changes you from the inside. Suddenly, you discover that you are not the same person that you were used to be. Things maybe were easier when you were younger, when you had less thoughts. We are caught in a web of an endless tomorrow. So we always think that we will have time to fix that problem, to do that thing, to be with the people we love. We think that we have endless time, but it's not like that. This happens because life forces us to choose. and we we go back to the phrases I was analyzing before. We are not able to give priority to the things that we feel inside that are the most important. And we feel estranged from ourselves. Rhythm is really important for the song to be catchy. I don't know how to explain it technically, but the accents during a song are really important. So, in instance, the chorus starts with a quite simple melody. Here we are, our existence but a shooting star. You need to put the accent to make it run, to make it work, to make it catchy. Yeah, if otherwise it will be just... It will be plain and flat. The accents of the consonants are acting like uh, some... Uh, how can I say? When you hit the... Bell? Horse? The, the, the subscribe the button. dishes of the, the of the <laughs> of the drums. The dishes. The dishes. You know the ride. Ding 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 ding. The ding, dishes. Ding. I don't the know. Symbols. Symbols. <laughs> That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, the dishes. The dishes. <laughs> oh, non mi veniva. He's <laughs> uh, looking for another band uh, to work with a singer that understands better how to explain rhythm concepts. The beautiful thing in this is that, as you noticed, also in uh, our How to Write a Song video, we never, never ever stick to technical words, technical information. We never go that technical. And that's because, first of all, we don't want to give lessons. We don't, I mean, we leave lessons to teachers. You know, we just want to explain our own way of doing things. And most importantly, the beautiful thing in all this is that of course she is explaining something she she cannot even explain but she understand that and that's the same thing people that listen to music and have no music knowledge at all also can recognize yes yeah I mean it's not a case that some pop songs some I mean not not necessarily pop but some iconic songs from the past some kind of, are so popular uh, even between people that are mostly not musical experts because uh, everybody is actually able to understand why he likes a specific song, why he likes a specific uh, melody. Of course they are not able to express with words, with the right words, but everybody knows why and how much a song is good or bad for him. That's the magic in music. You know, music is for everybody. We don't like that kind of uh, elitist approach of uh, music experts that just uh, think music is for a few selected one. You know, music is for everybody. There's nothing such as pop or mainstream music or underground music. You know, music is music. And an Iron Maiden song has got a pop potential similar to uh, a Michael Jackson song or to a uh, you know, Lady Gaga song, everything. And this brings me to those news in Italian webzines where, you know, uh, Lady Gaga played the song live with Metallica. Yes. And everybody's like, oh, shit, uh, stupid, uh, Metallica are sellouts, uh, uh, Lady Gaga is shit, you know, that kind of stuff. And of course, these people have nothing to share with music because uh, of course Metallica are artists, Lady Gaga is an artist, they go together. I mean, as I said, Michael Jackson made a song with uh, 
Van Halen and with the total bass player so but music is music uh, the main difference are the arrangements you know? yeah the arrangements the sound another funny thing is talking again about towards the sun I had the inspiration for the melody from a disco pop song as I already told you in a previous video na 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 If you got this far in the video, thanks a lot for being with us. See you soon and a great hug. E basta. E non sto Okay, so see you there and a great hug. Allora, lo dico io. Remember to let us know in a comment if you would like to see more things about our songwriting process, lyric writing process and so on, just let us know in the comments. Okay, dico io. Ciao! Perché dici sempre ciao? Ciao! <laughs> cioè, perché devi soffrire quando dici ciao? No, non è soffrire, eh, manifestare a te. Ciao! Ah. Va bene